welcome to Classical Mechanics 2. In this video, we'll take a look at general rotational motion and motion in rotating reference frames. Let's consider a rigid body that's both translating and rotating. In the last video, we showed that its angular momentum can be decomposed into an orbital part, that is the angular momentum of a point particle with the same mass as the body located at the body's center of mass translating past the origin and a spin piece, which measures the rotation of a rigid body about its center of mass. In that description, we made the assumption that the rotational component always passes through the center of mass. But what if that isn't the case? Chazel's theorem says that we can decompose the angular momentum in the same way. Chazel's theorem states that the instantaneous motion of any rigid body can be written as the translational motion of a point P at a velocity V and the rotation about some axis passing through P, but this axis might change over time. I'm not going to prove this theorem for you because it's just a lot of algebra that isn't going to be insightful at all, but we're going to use this to simplify some complex rotations and make them more tractable. Before we get there, let's take a look at some rotating coordinate systems. It turns out in the future we're going to find that using a coordinate system that's actually stuck to the rotating body makes some calculations easier. If our coordinate system is rotating at angular velocity omega, so it's this vector here, the velocity of a point that's a distance r from the origin is given by v is equal to omega cross r. So this relates the time derivative dr by dt to the position via the angular velocity vector. And we can extend this to derivatives of other quantities too. In rotating coordinate systems, if we have some quantity u, we can relate the rate of change of u, that is du by dt in this rotating coordinate system, to that angular velocity. And we find that the rate of change of this quantity u is given by the angular velocity cross u. Let's have a look at what happens when we have several coordinate systems rotating together. We'll start with coordinate system S1. Coordinate system S1 is rotating about coordinate system S2 at rate omega 1, 2. Coordinate system 2 is rotating about coordinate system S3 at rate omega 2, 3. This implies that coordinate system S1 is rotating about coordinate system 3 at the combined rate omega 1, 3 is equal to omega 1, 2 plus omega 2, 3. Imagine now we have a point P in the lab frame, and it's traveling at velocity VP in the lab frame. Then in coordinate system S1, the velocity of this point is equal to omega 1, 2 cross the position P. In coordinate system S2, it's traveling at VP is equal to omega 2, 3 cross the position P. And in coordinate system S3, it's traveling at VP is equal to omega 1, 2 plus omega 2, 3 cross the position P. For example, imagine we have a sphere that's initially rotating at angular speed omega 3 about a stick that's initially pointing in the z direction. You grab the stick and rotate it about the y direction at angular speed omega 2. Right after this kick, what is the angular velocity in the lab frame? The new angular velocity is omega 3, 2 is equal to omega 3 plus omega 2. This means that there's no motion of the points in the sphere along this line here. As the rotation continues, vector omega 3 will change directions. The net rotation will still be omega 3, 2 is equal to omega 3 plus omega 2, but since omega 3 is constantly changing, there won't be a single fixed line of points throughout the whole motion. This is an example of why coordinate systems fixed to the object might be more convenient. We know that the sphere is always rotating in some special direction, the direction that the stick is pointing in then the external rotation is always about some fixed direction in the lab frame, so that's the y direction, that's orthogonal to omega-3. In the next video, we'll learn about the moment of inertia tensor and see how all of this algebra plays into a single unified description of rotational motion for any extended body in any direction. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.